Well, welcome back to Steve Rob Reviews. Today we're doing something a little bit different, something I haven't done before, and uh, I'm just going to show you something that I built many years ago. It's a utility trailer, and hopefully, you guys can get some uh, some good ideas off it. You can incorporate it in your own trailer. These are all my ideas that I've either seen on somebody else's trailer over the years, or some I just made up myself. And uh, Making your own trailer is not so easy. It takes a lot of tools, it takes a little bit of talent on welding. And uh, I'm going to show you this trailer that I built and some of the features. And you guys let me know what you think about it. And maybe you can get some good ideas when you want to make a trailer too. Okay, so the first thing that I thought when I was making a trailer was I'm loading my, uh, my Kubota tractor that I have up in my camp on the back. I haul it in this. And I thought, you know what? You got to have some stability on the back. So I incorporated these. These I just made up myself, just out of angle iron. And you can see how these go. You turn it upside down. And you put that through. You put your pins in. Well, of course, you would do the top one and the bottom one. And now you can uh, lower the jack on the front and bring it down so it's level on the ground or if you have to put a board or anything else underneath there when you're going up on your ramp you're not pushing down on the back of your trailer and wrecking your uh, your ball connection up at the top so I think uh, I think this is a good modification to do and this is just made out of angle iron and it's served me well there's one on this side one on the other side Another thing I'm going to show you about is you notice that there's uh, square holes here all over the place. I'm going to take you to the front of the trailer and I'll show you what that's all about. Okay, so as you can see there, you can get a good shot of what I've done. And all I did was uh, weld in some square tubing and then angle iron around it and made a pocket. And that goes around all four corners and I'll show you exactly how that works. Okay, so as you can see here, I've got my ratchet strap in here like this and you can use it like that attached to one of these uh, pins like this or it goes inside and it goes just like that or if you want it'll hook on the top side too but I always put it on the bottom and that that is about as rock solid as you're going to get. I'm going to explain to you a little bit about ratchet straps and what I've been told at the side of the road by the Ministry of Transport and how uh, you can do some things and you can't do some others. Okay, so here's just a regular ratchet strap. Nothing fancy about it. There's no markings on here anywhere and uh, it's a good solid ratchet strap and it was supposed to be good for 5,000 pounds and it's not worth nothing. Why is that? Well, I got stopped with my tractor on the back from the transport department and occasionally, you know, they'll uh, pull over trailers and they'll uh, inspect how everything is done. Well, he inspected everything. He said, you know what? You've done everything right except one thing. You took the tags off your ratchet strap. We don't know what the uh, holding strength of that ratchet strap is. So he said, what you got to do is you have to have an identifier on your ratchet strap that shows how much weight it actually holds. And he says, when you buy one, it's going to have a tag here too if it's not labeled on the outside of the ratchet strap. So yeah, you got to be careful doing that. He never gave me a ticket. He gave me a warning. And he said, you know, everything was done right here. That thing's not moving nowhere. But uh, yeah, you have to have an identifier on your ratchet strap. Not too sure if this applies to everywhere in the world, but it does in Ontario. So let's go on to the next tip that, uh, that I use. And uh, a little bit of a modification I've never seen on any other trailer, and I like it doing this. Okay, what you're looking at right there is on the tongue of the trailer. And I made my own angle piece to go up. And you can see it comes out of the electrical uh, connector, goes through a holder and just comes down to the end of the hitch and goes down to your uh, 
cable. And the reason why I wanted to do that is I wanted to be able to take it apart. So this comes off very simply like this. You just undo this. Now you can take your, your cable away and it's not in the weather or anything else. Now I'm going to show you something else that the Ministry of Transport booklet had mentioned before I started building the trailer and I incorporated it into this and uh, it's something a lot of people don't think about and I see it all the time on trailers so let's take a look at this okay if you take a look right there you can see that's where I have my hooks so I got a little bit of a holder that holds the hooks on and holds it off and uh, make sure that they don't come out and of course you always cross your uh, your chains before you hook them up. One thing that was quoted in the book was they don't allow up here a safety chain welded to the frame of the trailer by the only means. It has to have a mechanical uh, holding power as well. So what I did is I just tacked it on right here and you can see it slips over top of uh, this bar and it will not go over these uh, this bolt that I got on the end here. So it's not going nowhere and it wraps all the way around the trailer because I have seen a lot of trailers where they just weld it onto the side of the trailer and up here that's not a, a good thing to do and they will uh, pull your trailer off the road for doing that. Okay so I'll just give you a little walk around the trailer and point out some things that a lot of people don't think about. Right there. You see that cover? That's just a piece of aluminum flashing and it covers that marker light. And uh, if you don't put that on there, you'll learn the hard way like me how you could see how this has all been pitted from stones coming up from a gravel road. You just smash these out real quick if you don't put them in there. And I like to put a reflector on my fender so that at nighttime when I'm driving I can actually see the side of the trailer at the back just so I know everything is okay. Now this here is just an old tarp that I've kind of ratchet strapped on there just to keep the sunlight off it because the sunlight will deteriorate your tires immensely. So I do have a lot of these little hooks here all over the trailer. I'll give you a little walk around and uh, yeah make sure I, you and, and, I, and I've, I've switched all to LED lighting now so I've got a lot of these hooks you know where you can actually tie a tarp down and that kind of stuff and you notice I got one gray fender the top was rotten out here so I put a piece of uh, steel in there and uh, all LED at the back too and this is the only good use for a butt connector right there just to hold this chain on now I incorporated this chain in here as another safety feature and it serves two purposes. I actually have a gate. I'll show you the gate. The gate is made to go on here. And when I need a gate, I can put the gate on. It's very easy. And the MTO guy really liked that chain idea. Going across from one side to the other. And of course, you have to have lots of, lots of reflectors going along there. And uh, you can see that little light there is for the license plate lamp. And what do we got in there? Look at them celebrities right there. So, yeah, so my gate bolts on in this spot here, and this spot right here, and then it swings up, and it attaches to the two pins here. Of course, you gotta take the chain off. So, that's pretty much well it there. And as you can see, it's the same on this side. Now, I did have a level down here at one time. I don't know why I bought that. <laughs> And it's just all busted out since then. But yeah, I got the, uh, you can see here, I got it all. I got lots of uh, hooks on there, so if I want to tie something down. And of course, in this side of the trailer, you got to have a protector too, or you'll just bust out that lamp. So, you want to take a quick look underneath here, and I'll show you how I built this. Now, this trailer is all built out of 2 by 3 and 2 by 2 1 8 wall. And... The corners here are one by four, I believe, or five by one eighth wall. And of course, these here are all one by two. And you can see how they're just all welded in there. 
you know nothing fancy so and I do recommend getting these type of uh, wheel nuts here the captured ones that don't show the threads on the outside so they don't all rust up that's a good idea because this is mostly uh, left up north at the camp in the weather okay so let's take a look at the um, the trailer gate and I'll see what that looks like okay so here's the trailer gate here just sitting along the side of my fence in the backyard here and of course I put all the fasteners inside of a waterproof container for when I need it and you can see right here this is where I put the trailer on and put them to uh, pins through right there and it holds it on and it's very easy all I've got is a hinge down the bottom welded to here of course you gotta have more of these hooks everywhere and it only takes five minutes to put it on put the bolts in and away you go okay so for the inside of the trailer I'm just using one inch which are called five quarter boards all the way around and uh, I just bolted them down and we'll go underneath and I'll show you how I have them all fastened down underneath and uh, see if you uh, like this idea. Okay, so we're underneath the trailer here and what I did was I decided I don't want to drill any holes through any of my cross members. So this is what I done. I just used them, uh, them connectors. So I got carriage bolts on top and just them plates underneath. And I didn't want to drill holes like I see a lot of trailers. They drill holes right through your, your, your beams going across. So as you can see, I have this 3x3 three three square tubing going all the way along here. And she's welded to the uh, three cross members. And that's pretty well it, guys. Uh, it's very easy to build a trailer, you know, uh, if you have the tools and just a little bit of knowledge. And this is a 3,500 pound axle. And that's just a little bit of a view of what it looks like there. And you can see my wiring is all encased and enclosed all the way around. And uh, yeah, I think that's the best thing to do is to not drill holes through your beams. Because I do think that it uh, rots them out. Well, I hope you like this uh, little bit of a vid on just showing my trailer. And maybe you can get some uh, good ideas from the stuff that I've incorporated into here. And uh, you know, when you're hauling stuff in your trailer, you have to really strap everything down because these things bounce like you wouldn't believe. And of course, most people do not service their trailer. <laughs> I've seen so many trailers on the side of the highway, tires smoking right off because they've never serviced their bearings and their axles. And it's something that I do every two years, even if, you know, I hardly even use it. I just like for peace of mind for me, it's not worth a breakdown, you know, not servicing your trailer. And uh, that's the best thing to do as far as I know. Keep your tire pressures up properly the way they're supposed to be and chuck out your tires <laughs> after so many years. Whatever, you know, place you come from in the world where they recommend to get rid of your tires. Don't keep driving trailer tires for 20 years because... <laughs> you're going to be stuck on the side of the road. So thanks for joining me here today. And if you haven't seen this channel before, you're welcome to subscribe. And uh, you guys take care. Come back again. Cheers.